All right, good morning folks. It is Nick Mobile here and I thought this morning I would give you guys a super, super thorough breakdown of my routine when I'm crappie fishing. So generally I get here really early and uh, generally the less I know water, the earlier I try to get to a body of water within reason, you know, so I can kind of find cover, find structure that I want to fish and thoroughly analyze it to see if there's fish set up on it see what the fish are doing and then I'll fish that area so I usually start with down inside Jing because I like to see kind of the behavior of the fish I like to see how many fish are high in the water column and I like to see if fish are actually set up on the cover I want to fish brush piles generally are what I fish so down inside imaging is a really good way of seeing if there are actually fish on a brush pile so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to roll over some cover here and you can see already that there are a ton of fish in the area so we're rolling over a ton of fish right now i don't know if that's small crappie or shad probably shad a huge pile of shad so you can see that there is forage in the area which is you know one of the pieces to the puzzle you want you know what those fish eat in the area um, in addition to that that there is also cover right over here. So it looks like mostly shad over there, but we'll swing back around here and we'll see if we can find the brush here and you guys can see what that looks like and I'll show you what that looks like with fish on it. And it's a really cold morning. You can see skim ice is starting to form. That's kind of why I'm out here and doing this because we're kind of in a weird transition limbo where lakes are freezing up we don't have a lot of options so we're going to come back over this as you can see again a lot of forage in the area and that's a good thing that's that helps you want forage in the area so we're going to roll over some cover here soon i believe so look at this on the left that is a big old brush pile and as you can see there there are fish up on it all those little dots that are separate from the brush pile those are fish stacked up on that brush pile or a lot of shad one or the other i'm gonna get rid of this quick probably not the best idea but there we go ton of marks ton of marks that is a brush pile full of fish so that is generally what i do and if it's a lake i know really well i will go to several brush piles and see what they all look like and see which one looks like the best candidate to start fishing. So this one's chock full of fish. I will just go ahead and fish this. Uh, this is that body of water I was out on recently. That's just full of little ones and it has a couple of bigs, but they're hard this time of year to catch. But um, if I'm catching a lot of smalls right off the bat, I'm just going to move immediately. I'm not going to stick around and hope for larger fish because that generally does not happen here. So I'm going to switch out from my down inside imaging now that we see that there are fish up on this pile we will switch it out and we'll start using the flasher and that will help me vertical jig these fish you know it's just kind of like a really modest version of live scope i guess you could say you could see the fish come up for the jig you can see where your jig is at in the water column so we'll get this hooked up and we'll see if we can pull up our first crappie so stay tuned all right, folks, so now that we have found our brush pile with the down inside imaging and we have found that there are fish set up on this pile of brush, we're going to roll over it with our ice flasher. And what we intend to do is mark that same cover with the flasher electronics. And you can see it there. We're in 14 feet of water, and this is the cover coming up all the way to four feet. That is all fishable stuff. So we're going to get a good bead on how this cover is set up and we'll drop buoys to mark this cover as soon as we have a good idea of how this cover is set up under the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna meander, get a really good idea of how this brush pile is set up. And once I do that, I'm gonna find a good spot to drop a buoy and we're just gonna fish it. We're gonna see if we can catch some fish off of this. Some crappie. See, it's coming up there. That's all cover, all that stuff. Bottom is about 14 feet. And what I'm going to do is I'll just pitch a buoy out away here. 
and that'll kind of just give me a general idea. These fish are very energetic, I already found out this morning. I kind of caught one by accident already, just with my jig hanging off my kayak, so they're very aggressive again this morning. So now that we have our marker buoy there marking this brush pile, we will start to fish it. We'll use the down imaging, or we'll use the flasher to jig these fish. And ideally it takes a bit of practice, but after a minute you can line your jig up with the cone of the flasher. And you can actually see your jig going down to these fish. And we go. There's one right there. See how fast that was? These are fish. These are fish suspended above the brush pile. And since it's early morning yet, there's not a lot of sun or light penetrating the water. So I got on a chartreuse 80 bit swimmer from Bobby Garland with an ice jig. They really like to eat up these smaller lures, can really be your friend this time of year. So nothing special. And uh, like I said, I kind of expected that but I'm doing this video as a total full-blown tutorial for you guys to see how effective this can be. And a lot of it's just spending time on the water, guys. You just gotta be out here just doing it, you know, just practicing. These fish are very aggressive this morning. I figured they would be. We have a low pressure system that moved through a lot yesterday. A lot of low pressure. And I figured with the low pressure, these fish might be very aggressive because we had a low pressure system come through last weekend and that was the same deal. They were very aggressive. There we go, guys. That's a female. She's got eggs in her. It's a little better fish, guys. What a, what a nice surprise. Second fish. She's got some... I think she's got some eggs in her. It's a female. I do have a stringer. I think I'm going to keep a couple of these fellas. So we'll get her on the stringer. And these fish are set up over 14 feet of water. The brush comes up to four feet and then those fish are almost suspended above the brush so they are only two to five feet below the surface of the water so they are very high suspended in this water column which makes sense because we got the low pressure low barometric pressure and what that tends to do is it will make those fish suspend higher in the water column and you don't have to drop your jig as deep into that brush which is a huge plus very beneficial to you as the angler. So we're gonna get this one loaded up. There's a ton of five to nine inch fish in this lake, so we're gonna clean a couple out there, guys. We're gonna clean a few out. Get that one put on the stringer. And I might just keep my limit, because if you guys follow this channel, you know that I've said on many occasions that there is no trouble with keeping a limit of five to eight inches out of here i would not suggest keeping too many over 10 to 12 or anything 10 to 11 i would not suggest keeping or keep only a few and then anything that's over 12 or over 11 like i would just throw those back because there's not a huge population of that year class in this lake right now they're special so 
I throw those back. Here's one, guys. There we go. A little better fish there. Getting on some okay sized ones, guys. Skinny as a rail right now, but at least there's some length to them. So, there you go. That's a little longer one, guys, right there. But look how skinny that fish is. White crappie tend to be skinnier, but that thing has zero shoulders on it. Another one we can clear out of here. After I get this fish on the stringer, we'll talk about kind of how I work this lure. Because I am not working at all. That's kind of the secret to it. You don't work it. You just, you just drop it down there and hold it steady when the water temps are this cold. I mean, we have skim ice forming right now on this water. So it is really cold water. And when the water's that cold, it's about not working your lure. That is what it's about. All right, folks, so what I'm gonna do is that marker buoy is about where the brush pile is. So I'm gonna pull out some line and I'm gonna drop it down a couple feet we know these fish are about two to four five feet below the surface of the water and i'm just going to ease up on this cover here and sometimes i get bit just easing up on the cover but you'll see that cover show up oh there went one right there see he just eased up on it he hit it easing up on this brush These fish are almost on a pre-spawn bite right now, guys. I might have to maybe fan cast these fish. As hard as they're biting. So just another one. We're going to keep them all. Like I said, I'm clearing these guys out. But you can see how furious it is. I didn't even make it to the brush pile. These fish are suspended high. My kayak moving and just holding that jig and plastic steady that is enough to get those crappie to bite that is, you do not need to do any more than that just hold it at the depth do not jig it and just let the movement the natural movement of your hand in that kayak and to get that strike all right guys rinse repeat <clears throat> I'm gonna get a little momentum on my kayak. <clears throat> and drop that jig down. One, two, three, four feet. We're gonna start there. We're gonna ease up on this brush pile. And I'm just gonna hold my rod right there. I'm just gonna hold it. I'm just gonna hold it steady. And those fish will see that plastic minnow swimming and they might grab it or when we get up to this brush pile they will hit it vertical jigging them so we're just easing up real slow quiet the fish are lethargic the forage is lethargic they're biting hard today but generally that is their mood this time of year you just gotta slow it down We're gonna start coming up on that cover. We're coming up to our buoy. And that cover is gonna start to register here. And when we get over that cover, we'll start vertical jigging them. We know there's fish on this cover because we saw them on our down and side imaging. So, and we know there's forage in the area, so we know there's food. They have shelter, they have food, and they're gonna be in the area what they're going to be doing. This is a good one, guys. Oh, it's a bass. <laughs> there we go. Let's 
Got a little bass here, vertical jigging, folks. Dang, I hope that was a good crappie. <laughs> a little something different there, guys. Vertical jigging. <laughs> no different than the crappie, though. Just dead sticking in place. As the footage shows, I'm not jigging in any way. I'm burying my depths from time to time, just lifting it every now and then, dropping it, but not really popping it or anything. It's just to work the water column. It's not to impart action. I'm just working the water column is all I'm doing, guys. That is the point of it. So we're just holding it in place and every now and then I'm just lifting it or dropping it, but not fast. It's just to work the water column. Make those fish chase it a little bit. It's just to cover water. That's all it is. I'm gonna ease up on this pile of brush here. I'm going to lift it so I can see where my jig is. So it's dropping down to four feet now. So it's about five feet is where my jig is sitting right now. I'm just holding it in place. Here we go, guys. There's another one over here. Another one for the stringer. Just slow moving. Just slowly moving around that pile of brush, guys. I know I'm a broken record, but that's all it is. Just patience. Just do everything very slowly. Take it all real slow. That's a little better one. Right there. Putting together a little stringer, guys chartreuse this water is not super dirty either i got a really bright lure we're early in the morning like i said and that just calls them in it's just calling them in they're in a energetic mood i mean normally in water clarity like this i would probably have a more natural color but the fact that they're so energetic and we have low pressure right now i just always do really well with crappie when low pressure systems are over the area and i just thought i'd try with I thought I'd try chartreuse to call them in from a distance and they don't seem to mind at all. So right now we'll go with that bright, bright color that calls them in. As long as they're biting that brighter lure, I'll use it because they can see it from a distance. They know it's there and they're biting it. If the bite slows, we might try a different color or move to something more natural if they get picky but as long as they're aggressive we'll use bright color to lure them in there is nothing natural about that bright jig head bright tungsten 16 ounce jig head to drop it fast bright lure I'm not being subtle at all I'm just trying to call them in I'm trying to get them to come over and take a swipe at it I'm working it really slowly that's all that's subtle about it but the color and how fast I'm dropping it to the fish is very aggressive because they don't care right now let the fish tell you what they think Hey, oh, there's a decent one, guys. I probably caught 20 or 30 crappie since I've said anything, but we got some overcast conditions came in, but that's a better one we'll add to the stringer. And it brought in a wind direction change, but it hasn't really affected the bite, but I have on a, I think it's a 32nd ounce, or maybe it's a 16th ounce 
forage fry with a itty bit swimmer and it's it's got their it's piqued their interest but there's a better one and I'm still just you know just soaking my minnow I never stop soaking I never bring my jig up until I feel that crappie thump and they are in the brush pile they are suspended around it and kind of moving in and out And <laughs> we got some dudes swimming right now. Crazy. I wonder what they're trying to prove. I hope it's part of a study or something. But we got a pretty good stringer coming along here, folks. So it's coming in. Predominantly white, one black. We'll add this one to the pile. Another decent fish there, though. It's good to see some size variation that shows that the population might not be stunted just yet. There's just a massive population of fish in here in general. But I think that low pressure has just got these fish biting today. There's a lot of fish piled up in this area and it's really good. We got cover, we got forage, the two things I always look for. And I'm rolling over some more stuff here which makes me wonder I'm way off my brush pile and I know that there's no cover over here or I didn't think there was unless it's new but I suppose we could drop down and see what's going on over there could be another pile of crappie they're in such a pre-spawn mood it is crazy I think that might be why they're biting so good it's like they think spring's coming back around because we have all this unseasonably warm weather it's just nuts Those guys are crazy too. Wow. To heck with that. All right guys, last one of the day. We're gonna call it a day with that one. Get the wind, get out of here. Go warm up, have some coffee, make some cookies, spend some time with family. A lot of fun though, guys. I'm glad I was able to get on a slightly larger population of fish. It shows that there is some size diversity in here. And that makes me kind of hopeful for the future of this fishery. It's always good to, sometimes it might be best too to just take a break for a year or two and come back there's another one right no oh. there it is come on boy get on out of there there we go <laughs> anyways i thought i was gonna lose a jig there i should probably quit while i'm ahead but yeah it's just good to see that there are some some larger individuals out here even in the fall because that means spring will be hopefully even better because that's when the bite heats up pretty good pre-spawn spawn get on some good fish hopefully close to home um, but yeah just a lot of searching a lot of just holding in place just dead sticking that's all you need to do you don't need to move that jig at all just hold it there and let the natural cadence of your arm moving do all the work for you that's all you got to do I saw that one come up. That was awesome. There we go. Look how he gobbled that. So, once I got the, you know, skim ice cleared out of here, it's a lot easier to jig for them. But when you got that skim ice you're dealing with and fighting, it's just a lot of work. So, you know, another one there. Right on a brush pile. They started biting heavy once I got the skim ice cleared. And just patience, dead sticking, just hold it in place. Same thing as usual. We'll get out of here, bake some cookies, eat some cookies, and I'll see you guys next time. Probably still on open water because we got 50s, 60s this week in December. What is this? So slow, you know, brutal grind waiting for ice to form so we can get on some fish again. So y'all take care. 
we're gonna be in limbo here like I said for a while I think so hopefully come January we'll be on ice hopefully I would think so but anyways y'all take care see you next time we might recap back at home since I'm terrible about talking about it on the water and uh, yeah I'm gonna let you go bye